Hey everybody, welcome to Movie Dive, where we dive into some shit. Oh, we're recording already? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> what did you say? Um... Alright, let's do it again. Hey everybody, welcome to <laughs> Movie Dive, where we dive into some shit. Uh, I'm Mike. Also, Huffman Dickings. With me is CC. Also, Sierra Madre. Whatever. Yeah, so we watched uh, Hercules, Disney's Hercules. Oh, yes. We watched it because Mike. To be specific. Mike loves to watch things that he hates, apparently. No, because it's a Disney movie. And Disney is regarded with some kind of reverence. And I want. I feel like it's my life's mission to dispel that reverence and show you how shit Disney really is. All right, Mike. Starting with one of their worst, Disney's Hercules. So please make your case for why this movie does not deserve my scorn. And uh, they, first of all, and this is I, I remember loving this movie ever since I was little, and I think they got me from the beginning. Perhaps because I was so d- deprived as a child for uh, black uh, images on the screen, mm-hmm. they decide they have the brilliant idea to make the Greek chorus an actual chorus. Of you know, like a like a, like a Baptist chorus. Gops, gospel chorus. Mm-hmm. Is which, it Baptist specifically? I, I don't know. If I there's don't a know. difference. Probably not. Because I mean, I was raised. Other, and they're like Protestant and Episcopalian. I'm. I very much doubt that Protestants are going to be. Uh, I know wailing like that. I know absolute dick about church gospel choirs, but I didn't know they were specifically Baptist. No, it's just Baptists tend to have more emotion. I don't know. Okay. It, when you, I was raised Catholic, but I was raised Black Catholic, so sure. we still had like the the soul element in there. Uh-huh. But if you go into another Catholic church or Protestant church, it's probably going to be a little stale. If you go into a Baptist church, that that will always be popping. Mm-hmm. It will always be exactly like the Greek chorus from Hercules. <laughs> well, you heard it here first, you guys. Protestants are pretty stale. That's just what I've heard. <laughs> I um. I feel like that's probably a stereotype. Absolutely. What's uh? What's what? Stereotypes are the are the white backbone white of this Anglican. Country. Yeah, totally. Uh, Anglo-Saxon. Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Protestant yeah, yep. the uh, martini swilling, pearl wearing, uh, stale martinis. Not not talking to your children, not expressing emotion. Anyway, this is nothing. Damn, to some with condemnation Hercules. of Protestantism right here. No, just, no, just wasps. <laughs> wasps. Wasps. All right. So, how, what does this have to do with? Anyway, the chorus in Hercules, uh, very lively. Got you, gets you basically from the beginning with um, the classic five woman band that includes a uh, sassy short black woman uh-huh. because you know you don't you don't have anything unless you have a chubby sassy black woman. Uh-huh. And they pretty much set up this tale of how Hercules was stolen from his parents by the uh, evil... What's his face? Hades. Hades, yeah. No less. Lord of the... Lord of the evil. Lord of the underworld. and Lord of the Jews, as we find out. No. <laughs> that is definitely how he's portrayed in the movie. Absolutely. In fact, I don't... Who, who else? It was uh, Hades and Hermes are undeniably supposed to be stand-ins for New York Jews. Is that what they were going for? I feel like it, he used uh he used Hebrew or Yiddish. Didn't he call somebody a shlemiel? Yeah, but doesn't everybody? No, absolutely not. I will. I well, I don't know. Maybe in New York, people just yeah, call each other shlemiels. I, yeah, but you know. Then you're maybe not a New York Jew, but you're a New York asshole. No, and that's that's the. It's culture. It's how I you know. It's like I'm I'm saying gracias all the time. Uh-huh. It's the words just kind of seep in. If you go to enough delis, if you get enough bagels, all right. So you're just gonna start saying all kinds of Yiddish things. <laughs> is what I've learned from well, '90s movies and, and television. Wait, is uh, Hercules '90s? Yeah, uh, I think he was early 2000s, right? Isn't it the same thing? Uh, yeah, probably. Anyway, so he gets stolen by Hades. And, it came uh, out in '97. I'm he, looking on IMDb. He gets right now. stolen stolen by Hades and dropped on Earth, where he's where the, his two imps, pain and pleasure. No, no. pain and <laughs> suffering. <laughs> pain and suffering. No, at no, your well, service. no, no. There was the other one. Pain and panic. That's right. Pain and panic. Who failed to murder the baby because the baby is insanely strong. No, they failed to murder the baby because the baby didn't drink the the last drop. Of oh, the thing, no, which is very crucial because that's you know it's so fairy tale 
is that it's just this one little tiny mistake that ends up, you know, messing you up. That's in the right. End. He has a he has a serum. He has to drink. He has to drink the whole bottle of mortal um, stuff. Wait, 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 but that just demortalizes him. Yeah. But does not. The bottle isn't supposed to kill him. Yeah, they're supposed to kill him when he's mortal, but they couldn't kill him uh, because, because he still had a strength because he didn't drink the, the la- last, the last drop, drop it was from strength. the bottle. That makes sense. Okay, so they failed to murder the baby. Yeah, and they, they can't to, murder babies. Uh, Just let it go. Under the rug, yeah. which happens to be... Because that'll never come back to bite him because they don't understand how um, stories how, work. How catharsis, or not catharsis. Uh, what's the word? There's a word for it. Greeks invented it. Whatever. How story structure. Narrative works. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> So, and they just go on their merry way. Hercules grows up to be a clumsy motherfucker who can't take a breath without toppling something over or breaking some shit. And the way that they do it, they have to make him clumsy because if you're strong and well-coordinated, I mean, that's just too easy. You know? Yeah. There's no need. I mean, how do you train somebody who already knows what they're they're doing? You can't have a training montage if he's already, you know... In full control of his faculties. Doesn't have to be in full control, but he's like, really clumsy. By the time I it's mean, kind of wacky how clumsy he is. He is insanely clumsy. He is, like I said, inconceivably clumsy to me because you know, like if you grow up to be eighteen, like I said, Olympic athletes start out before they're eighteen. They're able I to don't, fully control, coordinate their bodies. I feel to win like medals on the world stage. I feel like, and this kid talking about a regular human who is trained probably since they were three years old. For one goal, which is an mm-hmm. Olympic medal, is not the same as a guy who's wandering around always oddly stronger than everybody else, whose body probably He's sprouted not, out of nowhere not for a second. just stronger. He can lift untold. Literally, the It's got to be kind of scary. The movie never tells you how much he can really lift. Yeah. But he can do it from a childhood age. Like, he, he has, from what we've shown, where he, like, picks up Zeus just by himself, picks up a horse, or what, what, does he, what else does he pick up as a baby? Right, so he's strong enough to crush and just maim to death every single person that he meets from also, the point that he's a child. He's literally, literally Goku, but <laughs> stronger than Goku, depicted like Goku. By, by the way, Goku in his depiction was basically like raised by himself and never had to interact with people, uh, and still learned to control his strength. Yeah, but you're comparing everybody when Hercules is is himself. Hercules is Hercules. <laughs> No. In this movie... This is what happens. You gain super strength that you are not even aware of. You kill and maim a bunch of things on your way up, and then eventually you learn, like, oh, shit, I'm fucking up. You either become com- a complete sociopath because you don't have any semblance of bounds because you keep breaking them, or you become fully aware of your semblance of bounds through social structures you surround. Right? I don't know, man. I've never had super strength. <laughs> <laughs> I've also I've also never been a god who was made mortal. I mean that's gotta that's gotta mess you up. I mean Maybe. you don't you don't know what kind of psychological effect that might have had on him. You know, he could have been like he could have been changed. Apparently very... apparently had no psychological effect on him because he grows up like a just some random, you know, clumsy teen. The apparently. psychological effect would be that he's clumsy. Why is he clumsy? Because he can't accept his own awesomeness. No, because he's somehow Spends 18 years being completely unaware of how close he is, even though it's plainly obvious. Anyway, I'm not going to blame the dude just because he didn't learn the skills. I'm not going to blame the dude. I'm going to blame the movie. Him, him <laughs> not learning the skills and, and you know enables him to meet Danny DeVito's character, mm-hmm. which, of course, provides endless fun because this guy is, a, you know, is, as depicted as a striking resemblance to Danny All right, DeVito. Well, actually, OK, so we're kind of we're kind of skipping ahead, but let's let's. Roll through the story real quick because this is like because the general arc is where I have my issues with this movie. Okay. All right. So we know that there's a bunch of scenes of him being a clumsy, toppling over entire cities. Fortunately, not murdering no, not, anyone. Not not entire cities. He just he just ruined Top, the market for yeah the entire know, like trading post. Yeah. Entire. Not entire cities. Not like an atomic bomb. He just knocked not, over yeah, the yeah, marketplace. That's, that's okay. it. That's easy to have to happen. It was built like a freaking domino set. For goodness mm-hmm. sakes. All right. That's so be destroyed. That's probably. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, he breaks a bunch of shit. Everyone gets mad at him, tells him to get the fuck out. His parents, his adoptive parents, finally break it to him that he was just found in the wilderness with the <laughs> with the sign of the gods, which is like some kind of trademark thunder and or lightning and cloud like brand of I the think, gods, I guess. And they're, I think they're, everyone is able to recognize, even though this is the only time we ever see no, it. No, this is the only time the audience has ever seen mm-hmm. it. I think the subtext that this is this movie is hiding from the children 
obviously because they changed the origins of uh, of Hercules's uh, birth. Yeah, is that there are probably a lot of children found with lightning bolts over their necks <laughs> because Zeus was just going around sleeping with all the women. That's true. It's probably the in the original in the original mythology. Hercules is the son of Zeus and some other mortal chick, like some random mortal chick that Zeus was like, yep. oh, you look fine on this Tuesday. I'm going to impregnate you because that's what he did. He just ran around just having sex with all sorts of things. And I'm not quite sure that all of them were human. And you, Hera, you Hera was also point, very jealous, too. At this point, there'd be like some kind of support group or club for yeah. parents finding out that they're impregnated by Zeus yeah. or and or other gods. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a symbol of the gods. So Hercules decides to trek to the Temple of Zeus mm -hmm. uh, that he does on foot with regular ass human speed uh, instead of just kind of jumping over there. On the way there, he sings a terrible song, which brings me to another point, which is like the songs in this movie yeah. are absolutely awful. There, I will give you that there is no unifying idea to the uh, music in this movie. Oh, there isn't a unifying idea. The I can go the distance. I think the number is performed at least three times, and I can go the distance as a line is delivered at least like ten times. So they really hammer that line into you, even though it has like almost no real meaning. I don't think in the movie. like going the distance is like an extremely vague sentiment that they never really explore. He sings that shitty ass song, gets to the temple of Zeus, and uh, Zeus reveals to him that Hercules is indeed his son, and that his son must become a hero before he can rejoin the gods. This is how this is how the mythology works in the movie. This is how the, you can you can become a god if you become a hero. The motivation, the but, narrative, uh, the, oh, the impetus for the story. Yeah, if if you were originally born of a god, you can become a god again if you become a hero. Mm -hmm. But you can become an ungod if you drink a potion. Yeah. So becoming ungod is here. very easy. Becoming a god is very very difficult. It's weird yeah. how that works. I I don't quite like it. But anyway, this is. This is the first part where I have a problem, where uh, Hercules has an out. He has, like, he has nothing really, like, he, he suddenly has a purpose in life that is given to him from on top. He is the chosen one, and he can become it through a series of events that are actually kind of, just kind of laid on him. He, all he has to do is find Frank. <laughs> What's his name in the movie? Frank, yeah. No, something, no uh, something with titties. Oh. Philatides. 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 Phil the titties. His mentor. He yeah. has to go and find this, this uh played Sarner, by... this this goat man. Yep, played lovingly by David DeVito. Danny. Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> David DeVito. <laughs> uh yeah, so uh probably the best character in the movie. The, no, actually the best character the best. in the movie. The, the best... only likable character in the movie. The only real character in the movie. The only yeah, maybe maybe so. Uh, because I and the thing that's interesting about that too, the thing that they they cause they always kinda have to walk that fine line between what's acceptable for children and what they can kind of get away with. <laughs> and the entire time, um, Phil or Titties is just running around trying to get all of the chicks, you know, just like every single time. Like, he's just a really horny bastard. Oh, man. And they make kind of horn jokes all over that world. might be in reference to the fact that he's a really horny bastard. You know, they can't be too explicit with it because of the children. So this is the only honest character in this movie. There are multiple either rape references or selling your body or using your body references because uh later on the the main uh, love interest oh, her yeah. only function is to Meg. use her femininity to get her feminine wiles yeah to get dudes into coitus and then uh join Hades side not coitus we don't ever see coitus fuckery right. <laughs> <laughs> so after uh, Hercules goes to um, Phil, um, Phil or Titties, and gets all trained up in a nice little training montage. He goes off and, um, oh yeah, he sings a song. Great montage, great, actually not a terrible song, and really... Danny DeVito actually sings the song, which is nice. Really great animation uh, in that whole sequence. Definitely a standout in the movie, for sure. Oh, so after after Hercules goes and um, does the training montage, he gets real buff. I don't know how many years pass, but like his neck grows by like at least four inches. And uh, he has to go off and he has to fight some stuff, you know, to really prove that he's a hero. But he's like having trouble finding stuff to fight. So then along comes Meg, who's all like, oh, yeah, I got some stuff for you to fight. H help save me from this big horse water demon. Oh, no, that's not how he accidentally happens upon her. Accidentally? 
Yeah, she she yells out. Accidentally. It was that first encounter was totally an accident. Remember, no. it's later revealed in the story that Hades again because he owns her soul that Hades asked her to recruit the centaur to his cause. Oh, remember? No. So she went in there to recruit him, and he's like implied, "Oh yeah, you can recruit me if uh, if I get some of that, some of that sweet ass." Yeah, there's a lot of sex going on. There's a lot of implications. There's a lot of implications. (laughs) Yeah, eventually he so he saves her, and then Hades. So through her, Hades finds out that uh, Hercules is still alive, not murdered by his minions. And uh, Hades is like, "Hey, I'm gonna use your feminine wiles to uh, take Hercules out of the picture through a series of convoluted plots to get her to get Hercules to fight a bunch of monsters." Oh, so they have the Hydra in there, the thing with many heads. And uh, that's actually canonical, so that's interesting. Oh no, they yeah, they kind of they kind of fit that in because in the original in the original myth, uh, Hercules has to um, I don't know if he goes through twelve trials or yeah, that's right something like that. He's got a bunch of trials. One of them includes him cleaning out a stable. <laughs> what? In yeah, the he's, original? No, he's got to yeah he's got to clean out the stable oh, in like one day. Well, it must have been like a really large stable. Yeah, he fights the Hydra, which is throwback to the original. Legend. Uh, he fights. We were shown that he fights the boar. Also, throwback to legend. Yeah. So yeah. And so he does. So then they have a montage of him fighting yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that it, are all kind of callbacks to to the original myth. Yeah. Not that you know we really care, but it's cute. Yeah, we don't care. Well, I mean, well, um, because they don't. They obviously don't care about the original story, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's a, it's a montage. Them. But this is the best part of the montage because it's a montage about how he fights all these things, and the undercurrent is that he becomes a brand. Yes. Not unlike Jordan. In yes. fact, I'm pretty sure the entire thing is an, is a huge reference to Michael Jordan's yeah, Meteor doesn't he, Prize. Doesn't he, doesn't he have um, Air his Herc. shoes? Air Herc? Yeah. yeah. He's got <laughs> shoes. He's got a shoe deal that everyone ends up wearing. Uh, a whole Clearly line this of movie took a lot from Space Jam. Yeah. He, earned, he apparently earns Greek-wide fame and fortune. Greek-wide. Uh, that he never has to... Yeah, it has to be Greek wide because Greece is the entire world yes. at that point. He never has to reflect on all of it, obviously, because it does make him feel uncomfortable though, because the the does fangirls, it? yeah, the fangirls made him feel very awkward. Oh yeah, that's right, because he's uh he's a celibate for some reason. He's a celibate because it's uh, oh because it's Disney, right? So he never he never has any other relationship except for the main love interest, who he's right. only in love with because she is the first woman that he sees. I no, guess no, he's seen plenty of women. <laughs> I'm just pretty sure he's never seen a woman like Meg. Oh, yeah. Meg is feisty. She like she knows Sarcastic. her own mind. She's got sarcasm up the wazoo. You know she's quippy, mm-hmm. um, which they don't have many women like that. I guess from his hometown. Maybe not. Uh, also, yeah, I don't. She's been around anyone. the block a couple of times, and you can tell. And that's and what... he he obviously intuitively <laughs> he intuitively respects that knowledge. Yeah. Um. He's like, I don't know what she knows, but she knows something. She knows something. I don't like it. I'm not quite sure what it is. So. He ga- gains his fame and fortune, but as we learn, the fates are about to align, and Hades has his plan to take over Mount Olympus. And, oh, that's that was the beginning of the story. If Hercules interferes with his takeover of Mount Olympus, he will lose. That's Hades, the fates, Hades the fates has predicted. one chance, one chance, where he can actually shove that smug Zeus's face right in the dirt. Yep. But if Hercules lives... If Hercules lives, he fails. He so, will fail. So what happens is that if Hercules fights, he will fail. He 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 gets Hercules into some kind of like a law-abiding handshake agreement contract that Hercules will lose all of his power and all of his strength for a day while Hades conquers the world with the help of or else so that so that he can save Meg. Yeah, because he doesn't want Meg to get hurt. Oh yeah, that's right. So Meg Meg doesn't get hurt. So as long as you know, as long as Meg's not gonna get hurt. He'll be human, you know, he'll be totally mortal for a day, which, mortal on Hercules, I guess because of the muscle mass that he built no, no, up. No, he, he loses his strength. His strength. Yeah. Oh, all also, of his strength. Yeah, he loses all of his powers also in that con- So, before he lost his mortality, or immortality, but in this handshake agreement, uh, he loses his strength. That's the what the agreement is for. As long as Meg doesn't get hurt, which she conveniently does... Because the Cyclops, during his taunting of Hercules... It uh, wasn't taunting. Drop, he was, like, drop-kicking his ass all yeah. over the place. Which is very weird to me. I don't understand how he's he was able to survive that. Meg gets crushed to death by <laughs> a column. She's able to breathe after that for a 
few minutes, uh, in which she explains that apparently her getting crushed by a uh, marble column nullifies the contract, and Hercules gets his strength back, able to participate in the fight, where he succeeds, of course, because he's Hercules, rescues Zeus, but Meg is dead, so he has to rescue her from the river Styx, from the river of corpses in Hades. Which, by the way, I love the way they animated that. Oh, yeah. It no. was very, very creepy. I remember even when I was little thinking, whew, I do not well, want to look at that. I'll definitely get to the animation because it's actually not all. But, so Hercules swims through the underworld. And because he's he was willing to sacrifice his life to save his girlfriend, that is apparently heroic enough to make him a god. Which oh, yeah. he automatically then he, becomes... Didn't earlier he was like, hey, dad, I've been doing a lot of heroic stuff. I don't know if you've seen my shoes. I've been doing all kinds of heroic things. Can I come home now? And Zeus is like, eh, mm, no, not heroic enough. You know, no, but you saved countless people, probably <laughs> countless millions. But unless you're willing to die, well, the implicit, it's not heroic enough. The implicit <clears throat> lesson here is, is that heroism implies sacrifice and him saving countless lives never put him at any serious risk, mm. right? He's so strong that he could handle all those challenges. It's just that no one else could. But in this one instance, in the end, I guess, he had to actually put himself at risk. Actually sacrifice a part of himself. Uh, potentially kill himself. And so that's, I guess, that's the criteria yeah, for becoming a god. That's a heroic enough act. And so he becomes a god, drags her out of the thing. She's alive, he's alive, and a god. Grand celebration up at Olympus, where Hercules is like, thanks for accepting me into your god graces, but I'd rather just, just chill on Earth with Meg anyway. So that's the lessons that he learns, is that love is more important than being a god. Which, you know, is arguable. Couldn't he just have gotten her no, dude, to be a god? It, it's very hard to become a god, as this movie illustrates. Yeah. The whole movie is like an explanation of why... Becoming a god is, yeah, is just a nightmare. It's, it's a, so easy. A bureaucratic... just be immortal. So that's that's basically the movie. It's pretty pretty simple plot, where a chosen mm -hmm. hero uh, saves the girl and becomes an even more hero. And everything is awesome after. So let's get to the actual like underlying themes, which is where I have like the biggest problem. Because this simple stories is fine. Uh, most Disney films have simple stories. Uh, they're fun to watch, but what really irritated me here was the thematic shit. I don't know. Do you, do you have any opinion on it before I totally tear this movie apart? <laughs> okay, so thematically speaking, I'm not quite sure there's a lot of themes going on here. Uh, it, it is it is a a frighteningly simple story. Mm -hmm. Which basically just has the hero's journey on there, even though he doesn't even really refuse it. He does never go through that kind of stage. He basically just throws himself immediately into becoming a hero. So there's that. I'm trying to think if he ever... No, I can't remember if, it, if there was any kind of moments where he ever really went along with that exactly. Mm -hmm. But there's also the theme of love. There's the... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what other things right, there so were. Alright, so let me lay it down on you. Alright this thesis of mine all right so this it's a tale of two misfits hades and hercules hades doesn't fit a mount olympus and we see that in the opening scenes of the film where he's kind of chilling where all the gods are having all their fun time but hades is you know like he's the nerd i guess or the the outcast no one likes him and they don't like him because uh, i don't know i guess he's hades he's, he's a downer he be honest. Yeah, I I think that he's he was not originally a downer. I think he's a downer because he's got to hang out with dead people. Because all the time. no, because people don't like. Yeah, because Zeus sent him to to watch over dead people and perpetually excludes him from his inner circle. All right, that makes Hades understandably a cynic and an asshole. It actually this this follows pretty consistently from how we see things work out. You know, like people. People get picked on and bullied, and eventually grow up resentful and, and kind of dickish. You know. Mm -hmm. Hades is like, wow, fuck these guys. I'm going to take revenge. I'm going to do it by summoning the Titans back from their underwater prison or whatever. So Hades doesn't actually have a way out here. Hades is permanently mortal, permanently a god, and everyone just treats him like an asshole, which he eventually embodies. And then we have Hercules, who through Hades' uh, doing, but mostly, like, not, not that he like specifically hates Hercules, but just kind of like, he needs him out of the picture because kind of, it just so happens he's in the way, because the fate says so. Mm -hmm. The fates, those like disgusting old hags, which are uh, <laughs> hilariously animated, takes Hercules out of the picture, and lo and behold, Hercules is a misfit on Earth. Everyone treats him like an asshole, but fortunately for Hercules, he's kind of like unassuming and hasn't grown that sense of 
resentment and cynicism, I guess because he's lived in isolation with his adoptive parents the whole time, rarely, if ever, going out in public. That's what sort of seems. Also, he's not surrounded by just dead people, and he's also he has no one people. to compete with. He has no, but yeah, he has no one to compete with. But he he's kind of surrounded by people who do not measure up to him in any in any real way. But they treat him like an asshole. You'd think that that would turn him to be kind of like resentful, but he's not really resentful. He's just kind of like, uh huh, what? He's kind of dumb. Hercules yeah, he's is kind probably, of he's probably really stupid. Hercules is kind of dumb and naive, and but that's not that's not really the problem. The problem is that Hercules is even though he gets picked on, he again he has an out. He's the chosen god. Being like conveniently revealed to him as soon as he has any issues is that he's actually a son of a god, and he has a complete trajectory through basically cronyism. Because how does he get training from uh, from Frank? Yeah, Frank Reynolds. How does he get that training? Zeus refers him. Just, he just well, can't, I mean, he, he has to reprove himself, but yeah, he does kind of he 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 get the, the word. He gets the word out, right? Uh, basically, Hercules leaves his environment that he would otherwise have had to struggle through to get a proper trajectory and a proper direction from the Greek elite, which here are the gods, right? Hercules, even though he is always a misfit, was always causing problems... Not through a fall of his own. He never has to self-analyze and self-discover because he gets a trajectory built for him to become the greatest person ever. Mm-hmm. That he never really has to work for that much because, again, he's already super fucking strong. I mean, he gets pretty ripped during Phil's training, but again, he just has access to it. Hades doesn't. Hades doesn't have access to to become less of an asshole. He doesn't have anyone trying to be his friend, anyone trying to train him how to be cool, you know? So you have one dude who's basically an asshole because he has to be, and one dude who's a hero because he has to be, even though they're both they're both technically in the same boat. And that's where I have my problem, that you're basically either condemned to be an asshole or you get blessed by your, I mean, in this case, he's not rich. He's just created the world and is an all-powerful, omnipotent god. Think- uh, but your daddy is able to get you out and set you on the right track to succeed. I think it depends on your attitude because Hades got the whole underworld, you know? Mm-hmm. But he just couldn't be satisfied with that. And I think he was bitter. I, I think he was bitter not because he has the underworld. I think he's bitter because, again, Zeus treats him like an asshole. And we, Does he? We see, yeah, we see a couple of, we see a couple of uh, uh, scenes of that, actually, in the beginning. I don't remember the exact quote or the, like, the exact scene, but it was something like, Hades uh, goes to meet Hercules, and Hercules is like still a baby, and he punches Hades, and everyone just kind of like laughs at him, you know? Well, because it's kind of funny. Baby's, po- baby's got super strength. No, they point and laugh at Hades. They're like, Hades, why are you always such a downer? In I'm doing my best Rip Torn impression. <laughs> who, by the way... It's pretty good. Who, who, by the way, Rip Torn is an awesome actor and does an awesome voice for Zeus. Was an awesome actor. Oh, is he dead? I think so. I don't think he's dead. I think you're making it... <laughs> I mean, Google. I hope not. I Take think he's just... Google. All right, look up if Rip Torn is dead or not. Still alive. Still alive. Bless his soul. Legends never die. He's 84. Yeah, so so this is this is my problem. It's because this follows a very by the book chosen one narrative where everyone is condemned to their fate and they can do nothing to rise above their circumstance unless they're given the permission to do so. And the permission comes from basically their social ties entirely. And this is the thematic breakdown of Hercules and why I think that this movie doesn't hold up today because it just like the values that it imparts are just kind of like, yeah, like you are, do you, do you suck right now? Well, unless you have a strong daddy who can hook you up with like a proper trainer in a proper direction, you're basically fucked. You're basically, you become Hades, a cynical, hateful douchebag with his hair made of fire. Sounds about right. Uh, and this is this is why I hate this movie. And on top of the fact that the script is kind of shit, they kind of had to do like I said, they kind of rammed that I can go the distance line down your throat a bunch of times. The fact that uh, Hercules is just kind of like a like an uninteresting character outside of the fact that he can just like punch dudes really hard, even though uh, you know like there's the the Greek. I mean, there's not a lot course. of struggle with him. There really isn't. He doesn't the, ever have um, to struggle. His struggle is. Completely unlike physical. in unlike in the Lion King, you know, because this is basically the Lion King, but you know, with Greek gods. Unlike in the Lion King, he doesn't lose his father, he doesn't lose his faith, he doesn't lose lose his guidance, he doesn't feel any sort of guilt or remorse or any kind of real feeling. He falls in love with a girl that he just meets and, has and no wants persona- to sacrifice no real, himself. No real uh, character to her either, outside of that she's kind of like sarcastic she's sassy and, and spunky, and, sassy and spunky, know. exactly. And has her own, but her she's own she's she's past. like the 
stereotypical damsel, which she's referred to I literally. Actually, you know what? I would have liked to have seen Meg's story, honestly. Because like, you, go, you go and you, you know, sacrifice yourself for somebody and then they go and off with somebody else. That's, that's true. It's pretty, pretty actually, her, story. yeah, her story absolutely has more uh, pathos. Mm. Another Greek invention. Mm. Then Hercules, for sure. Hercules just, uh, you can't relate to him. You can't relate to his struggle because, again, his biggest problem is that he's just so fucking like, very, very awesome. much like Superman. In that yeah, way. he's basically Superman, and that's the struggle. And whereas, you know, you could argue that Superman's uh, struggle, or who else does the same arc? Oh, like I said, Dragon Ball Goku has mm -hmm. the same arc. They deal with it in a much more like believable way. Like they're like, oh well, like Goku is just portrayed as a complete idiot who never learns to not be an idiot, and Superman grows up always kind of like trying to. Trying to like live up to his own like strength, I guess he's trying to like like struggles with how also he saves too, all these people. Superman's and... actually lost something. I don't feel a sense of loss with Hercules. No, Hercules only which... finds, only ever finds. Which to yeah. me is kind of like grew up with a loving Black foster King. family, and then found out that he's actually son of a god who oh. is totally. That's why all those stories are about orphans. What stories? Like the people, they always start off the story. They lost their parents. Mm -hmm. Like Batman, yeah. You know, you got to lose your parents because you have to. You have to lose something for people to be like, oh, you no, know, all you've Zeus been through something. Is his immortality? If you, haven't, if you haven't lost anything, you know, <laughs> like the only thing he's lost is like the ability to be a god. Yeah, which which, which we can't relate mere to. For us mortals, I'm just like, eh, whatever. We, can, we can't know? relate to it. It'd be it's basically like if we were to take it as a metaphor, what did he lose? What is God like to us? You know, like some untouchable type. Of you know, like oligarch or like a monarch yeah. or something like oh, man. you lost your princehood or whatever that you never knew about. By the way, he never feels the loss because yeah. he was a baby, so yeah. he just kind of grows up and he's like, Psh. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's that weird it like, place. but which isn't really I don't know. They don't really get that across because, for example, like Mulan, Mulan feels off, right? She feels like she doesn't fit in, but yeah. you definitely get that she feels that she doesn't fit in, you know. With him, it's not really, it doesn't really come across. He sounds oh, with, too peppy. Yeah, with Mulan, I think the struggle is very real. Mulan never, actually, Mulan loses a lot. She never has a lot to begin with. She ha All she has is her honor, her family's her family. honor. I'm yeah, sorry. Her her, honor. Not her honor, her family's honor. Yeah. No one cares about her honor. Which and she's like, a lot. even though I have no social standing or social clout whatsoever, I'm going to put the burden of my family's And she honor keeps taking real shoulders. risks that Absolutely. you really feel. Hercules, uh, I don't know, I don't see it. I, yeah. He just, all he has to do is become the thing, again, he's destined to do. His road is paved for him. All he has to go is kind of like take it a step at a time for him. When I was so. a kid, I liked the Greek chorus. I liked the jokes, like with Phil and people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I never really liked, I never liked Hercules. And I think you can see that because this movie is like the least successful that they've had. I mean, they, they, they came out the gate, Lion King made all that friggin' money. Lion mm -hmm. King made money, like, hand over fist. And then Notre Dame came out and everybody was like, meh. And this movie came out and they were like, like meh. You know, they, it made some money because it was supposed to be geared towards boys and stuff, but yeah. it never really, it never really got there. Uh, yeah, it, it, it has out. a bunch of yeah, it has a bunch of like cultural like memes of, of the time, you know. Yeah, like with the air hurt and the, the Rocky montages with Phil standing in as your like grouchy beast trainer. I forgot his name. Uh, Old man trainer. Yeah, they they go to Thebes, which is up basically a scene for scene, trying to like establish a New York type of feel. Or what he's like running around selling like what, what are they selling like pita bread instead of instead of hot dogs. Mm -hmm. This is another problem, too. I don't know. I can't think of a movie. I'm trying to think of a movie where they do that, you know, where they take things like Shrek. For me, Shrek doesn't hold up as well either because you, you take a lot of the things from the current, you know, era and then you put it, you know, like a mirror image, like jokey image into the movie, um, which might be cute for the people at the time, but it doesn't really but Shrek was a, hold up. Shrek was a full on send up uh, of animated of, of, these animated, of Disney specifically. Of Disney, yeah. But they also included like a lot of things from contemporary just outside that world yeah which for me i'm like create a world within itself you know create a world of its own well like i said i mean to me like those like individual things are just kind of like seeds on the pile of seeds or some shit like, that. like it's just like the whole movie sucks uh but like a bunch of these like little discrepancies just kind of add on to what is essentially like a huge thematic breakdown of like the kinds of again the kinds of themes that you're sending across just like you're not really in charge of your own fate that and that's where 
I have a problem. Despite the fact that, again, I think that the animation is gorgeous. It's fantastic. It's like, I think it's probably the best or some of the best that Disney's ever done. I mean, at the time, at least. They have like some really nice, the flame effects on Hades. And every time he gets angry, his flames explode. I like uh, the way all the gods look. All the gods, yeah. I like, I like yeah. the choices that they made with doing them in different colors. And it's very nice. Yeah, very stylized. Uh, like, again, the, the whole training montage sequence, very brilliant. The muses. There's like oh, that one scene where like they use like the Greek pots, the pottery, mm-hmm. and the muses are drawn on them, and they're done in the style of like those drawings. And then you see like the muses like slide down and across the pots and stuff. Mm-hmm. This is a hilarious touches, and they do it to like the beat. Brilliant. Are those Looks... the muses or the chorus? They're the muses. They're the muses. Oh, they call muses. They're the muses. Yeah. Anyway, so this is all I have to say about this movie. I feel like I've always wanted to just go on record about. <laughs> about Disney you, movies, you, you I think that we're going to continue going on record about Disney movies and see how much, how many of them hold up. But I think Hercules definitely does not. Oh no! And it did it purposely. If you, I think it's a perfect example of maybe a metaphor for hey guys, you know, forget what you want to do, just be born rich, mm-hmm. and then all your problems will be solved. And then maybe you get to have like you know Jordan shoes. Yeah, I mean, maybe that that might be a uh, an accidental commentary on Jordan that Jordan didn't work hard. And that he just kind of got where he got because he was always destined to be great. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think he worked hard. No, I know Jordan worked hard, but I think that that might be what they're saying is that like Jordan was just like, you know, he was always great. I don't think that's what they're saying. I think they just you don't randomly. Think so? No, I think they randomly put that in because they thought it was going to be funny. Maybe. Like, maybe they're assholes. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> hard to say. That's what I'm saying. If you're going to mention something from the current world, you got to do it in a better way than what they did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I'm going to tell you what, if Pixar ever does it, I bet you that mess will that mess will hold up. I don't know. I don't have anything else to add about yeah. this movie, do you? No. All right. Well, that was a good review. Let us know what you think, you guys listening, all, all of you. All, all of two you, of you. All of our fans. <laughs> all, all two of our fans <laughs> who probably never even made it this far. No. Cool. All right. Well, Huffman Dicking. Bye, guys. CC signing off.